Hello and welcome back to a rather gloomy day in the woods where for the past month now, or just a little over a month, I have been vlogging every single day of my life as I renovate this 1920s house. And as you can imagine, it's quite a stressful experience. So we thought it'd be a good idea to take at least one day a week off. And on my days off, I like to do something a little bit different. So thanks to today's sponsor, Makera, we're gonna be unboxing the Cavera Air, a desktop CNC machine that has professional accuracy right on your desk. Firstly, we're gonna be running a couple of tests using a variety of different materials. And then I'm gonna try my best to make a custom chess piece. And with zero experience, how hard could that be? Probably not that difficult, but before we unbox this, let me give you a bit of a background on Makera. Makera is a team of makers who wanted to design their dream CNC. Something compact, enclosed, but powerful enough for real projects. The Carvera Air is their latest machine and it's priced at a little under £2,000. And here is what makes it interesting. The accuracy is down to less than 0.01 millimeters, a working area of 30 by 20 by 13 centimeters, and a spindle speed of up to 13,000 RPM. Not only that, but you can actually add a fourth axis or a laser module for more versatility. So on paper, this little machine should be able to handle wood, plastics, and even non-ferrous metals like aluminium or brass. All right, I am very excited to see what this machine looks like. So let's get it open. The Carvera Air arrives in an absolutely solid box. And let me tell you, it weighs quite a bit. So make sure you've got someone else handy to help you take it out. Inside, you get the machine itself, a toolkit, collets, and some sample materials. Makera also sent me over the fourth axis rotary model and a laser head, which are extras for me to test. So make sure you check the official what's in the box if you're buying one yourself. Well, first impressions, it is a absolutely solid machine. It feels incredibly premium. I actually really like the toolkits and stuff that they sent out as well, because that, because that actually comes in really nice packaging. The one thing I would say, if I was to offer any critique whatsoever, is the design of the cardboard box it comes in. Whilst it is very, very solid, and you know you're gonna be safe having this transported across the world, wherever it's going, uh, it would be nice to have one of those boxes where you could lift the cardboard box out of the machine, rather than trying to lift the machine out of the box. It's very difficult. So I, I highly, highly recommend, if you have another person to help you lift it out, definitely, definitely get someone because I couldn't move it on my own. Uh, I, I needed Jess to help me. So that was the only thing I could, I could critique. Otherwise, it is an amazing looking machine. You can actually slide this cover down so it is a fully enclosed workspace that allows you to keep noise down and the mess inside. On top of that, it's a good size compact machine that you can most definitely fit on your desk. I, I have mine on my workbench. I'm not too worried about it taking lots of room. It's easy for me to store away when I'm not using it. But to be honest, it looks so stunning that it's kind of one of those machines that you want to keep out on show. And I can't wait to put it to work. So let's plug it all in. This machine is so user-friendly that one of its standout features is a smart tool change and probing system. The software automatically tells you to swap out the bits and probes the surface, meaning you don't have to re-zero manually every time you change tools. Fortunately for me and my very minimal experience, they actually send you an example guide so I can try out this machine before attempting to make my own chess piece. And and the first thing we're gonna try and make is the LED light. And as you can see, thanks to the fact that it has less than a 0.01 millimeter run out, it is actually perfect for detailed projects like this PCB. But like I said, switching out this tool is so easy. The software tells me what tool I need. Then I simply pull on this lever, remove the old tool and replace it with a new one. Then I just press confirm on the software and it continues working. With the PCB board now made, which looks <laughs> amazing, it's so accurate. We're gonna switch over to some ABS plastic and I want to see how the milling goes. Thanks to its modular fixing plate, it's actually very easy to secure your workpiece down. You can use the clamp provided, double-sided tape and more. With all that fixed, let's start milling. Uh, yeah, that creates quite quite the mess. Um, I, I did want to keep the, uh, the door open, the enclosure completely open so I could film it better because when the enclosure is down, it's like reflective. Uh, I tried my best, uh, but yeah, safe to say that that creates a hell of a mess. All the more reason to make the most of that enclosure. And it has to be said, it also keeps the noise down, which is actually quite nice when you're working on a desk environment. It's okay in here in my workshop, but 
the ability to close the enclosure, keep the mess inside and have it a little bit quiet is really nice. But next up, we're gonna try engraving some acrylic. I've gone for a Spider-Man thing because I think Benjamin's gonna quite like this LED light. So far, so good. I am absolutely mind blown about how detailed it can do this. And it's just, it doesn't even sniff at the, at the materials I'm throwing at it. Although the next part is meant to be an aluminium switch plate. So I'll be interested to see if this kicks up a lot of mess. No way, how good does that look? I am seriously impressed with that. Let's take it down to the house and show Benjamin. Ready? Yeah. Open your eyes. Whoa. How cool is that? Yeah. Ready made all that. Do you know who that is? Spider-Man. Yeah. Do you like it? Well, that's not quite the, the reaction I was going for, but to be fair, he's been in front of a screen all day whilst I've been working on this. So uh, he's a bit, not really with it. Um, I will admit, I, I didn't actually uh, solder all of that together. Yeah, the, the PCB board is still here. Um, thankfully, uh, they give you uh, an LED uh, light assembly kit. So I could have soldered it, but I am really bad when it comes to like fiddly soldering stuff. Uh, but fortunately, they give you an LED board pre-done, uh, but it's still quite cool to see it create this. I, I'd be interested to know what else we could do with the PCB boards. Especially now, the potential has been unlocked with this machine. I have to admit at this point that it took me a minute to wrap my head around. I had to obviously, for the first time ever, actually read the instruction manual. But once I got the software, it was super easy to understand. I followed the guides on how to make that LED light and just watching it all come together has, has just blown my mind. It's one thing to create something out of nothing, but another thing to tell a machine to, here's this square piece of wood or here's this piece of an acrylic, carve it out and, and turn it into this absolutely amazing 3D model. I mean, look at the Calvera controller. It literally looks like something out of the matrix. But for cam software, Makera has their own cam software solution, which makes it super beginner friendly. You just import your model, generate toolpaths and send it straight to the machine and it just does it. But if you prefer Fusion 360, VCAV, or any other CAD or CAM tools, it's compatible with those as well. Now, this CNC does do laser engraving, as you saw me mention earlier. It has free axis relief as well as four axis relief. And whilst I'm a little nervous about this, I'd be lying if I hadn't been stressing a little bit about uh, committing to making a chess piece. This machine can do it. I just need to figure out how to, to make it do it. So I am now going to attempt to make a custom chess piece. Okay, so we're gonna be clicking on four axis. I'm going to import my model like so. And what I'm gonna do is because at the moment, as you can see there, it's not really at the, uh, the rotation I want it. So we're gonna click on rotate plus 90 on the XZ plane. I'm also going to scale it up a little bit. So we'll go with 25 like so. Hit close. And now I'm gonna right click on path, set a new rotation path, make sure I've got the right materials, which I do. Hit calculate, should calculate the path for me. And there you go, it has drawn the path. Now I've got to change the material because I'm obviously not gonna be carving this out of aluminium. We're gonna be using plastic, it's square and it is 100 mil in length and 35 by 35, hit okay. Right, so our model perfectly fits inside what we're gonna be carving out. Now I can hit export, click the path that we're gonna be exporting. It's asking for tool number four, hit export. Now in our Cavera controller, we can actually upload a new file. Okay, as you can see, it's completely uploaded to the machine. I'm gonna hit select. It's opened the file, you can see there, 
and it is good to go. Now all we need to do is open our fourth axis and set it up. Before we start, we need to make sure this spindle box is all the way to the left. They shift it in slightly for packaging. Okay, slide that all the way to the left. We now need to put the rotary module on here and screw it all in. With that securely in place, we now need to bend the cable around the back here and plug it in under here. Now we can turn the machine back on. That's pretty cool. Now we're just gonna fix our epoxy tooling board by opening the clamp here. We'll move the tail stock right up and secure that in place. Okay, I think we're ready to go. I probably should have done the sample model first before trying this on a, on a custom chess piece. No idea if it's gonna work or not. We're gonna give it a go and see how it turns out. We're gonna hit run on the software and pray that I've done everything correctly. Many, many hours later, it has actually finished. So many hours later, it's now actually the next day. Um, it's so when I was using the software, I think I was meant to choose the material first and then set the path, but because it thought it was aluminium, it took about eight hours. Uh, but it's done an absolutely cracking job at it. But as you can see by the, uh, the dust in there, it would have been nice to have this extraction on. However, I don't have uh, a clip to clip my hoover onto here. So be aware if you don't have the like the full setup that you will periodically need to hoover that up. But once you do, oh my, I did something, I made this. <laughs> I just wish I'd set it up properly. I have a more complex uh, chess piece that I'm actually wanting to try because as you notice there, the base is very much still a part of the block as well as on the top. And what I didn't consider when I set the model up is that you can actually add little 3D props for it. So it'll cut it right down to make it easier for you to cut this out. But all in all, I am genuinely so impressed at how easy that was for a novice like me. Considering this is also a low poly model, it's come out really good and the details are so, so nice. What I would like to try now is a more complex one um, with a bit more preparation. So I think I've got it set up properly. I've got my material set right. I've got the path all drawn around. I even put a little prop at the bottom there. Time to hit go and see how it performs. Well, it was going so well until I started to notice I was getting a little bit close to this end spindle. It's safe to say that whilst it does an incredible job. It's me, I need a bit more practice. Don't get me wrong, I think the pawn turned out really well. Uh, granted, as I said, it, it is a low poly model, so that's why it doesn't look like super smooth on the top there. But as a proof of concept, I could actually make a full chess set using this machine. I just need to get a little bit better with the software, which fortunately with a bit of time, I will get better because thanks to their YouTube channel, they have a bunch of guys over there that you can subscribe to, follow along with, and it'll teach you everything you need to know about their cam software. But after continuing with their example guide, I managed to try out some laser engraving as well as the free axis relief and the models I've made today are just mind blowing. I mean, the fact that I managed to create this with literally zero experience before even opening this machine it's just it's staggering. I, I love machinery and equipment that is so user friendly and beginner friendly that anyone can take their hands to it. And considering the low price point for a desktop CNC, it feels like an absolute no brainer. The fact that you can change the tools so easily, the precision is insane and it has an enclosure so you can keep all the mess inside, allowing you to put it on your desk because it is a, such a, a small machine. It's gonna change the way that we do things around here. The fact that I can now create things and carve things out of a machine is just mind boggling. I actually ran out of materials, but I would love to try some more chess pieces or other fun little things made out of wood. But it goes without saying a massive thank you to Makera for sending me out their Carvera Air 
Carvera Air. It's, it's such a tongue twister for me, I don't know why. But if you want to get yours, then make sure you scan the QR code that you can see on the screen. Or if you just want to find out more, there'll be links in the description as well as a pinned comment. I'm so grateful and appreciative that they've reached out to me to send me one of their machines because a CNC machine is something that I have wanted to play around with for the longest time. And it, oh, it was genuinely quite daunting at first, wondering like, oh, am I going to be able to make this chess piece like it, it seems like a really complex thing but honestly as i said before it's so user friendly it was a breeze to get through and whilst i made a couple of mistakes along the way i'm sure with time i'll be able to create some really stunning pieces out of that machine it's just it, it's honestly just been a, an absolute eye-opener for things that we could possibly do so yeah let me know in the comments down below if you have any ideas or suggestions as to things that we could make as i said like a chessboard would be really dope i think i would love to make some signage out of it because we still have no signs around here so no one can actually find us um as well as some gifts for friends so yeah let me know in the comments down below what you think any ideas that you might have but on that note guys i am going to wrap up today's vlog it has been a uh, a rather long long one because i decided to uh to set the machine up wrong and it, it took like six to eight hours to uh to cut that 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 first piece out granted the second one whilst i did make another mistake in the sense of like aligning it properly it did it significantly faster and i reckon i could probably with the right materials make a full chest set within a day like it, it it's literally like handcrafted materials but with machine it sounds so backwards to say that i'm literally wearing my handcrafted uh my handcrafted hoodie right now but the fact that you can get like professional like gifts from that machine it is just yeah uh, I'm, I'm honestly lost lost for words so yeah i am gonna go thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace peace much love bye bye